Now let us look at the fourth point. It is living beings group. The living beings increase in height and size. This is called growth. You can see that all organisms are small at the time of their birth. Later they acquire their definite height and size. Growth takes place gradually depending on the size of the organism. In plants, the growth is observed at its stem tip or the size of the stem. Now, the fifth point of characteristic that is living beings move. How do you know that living beings move? You have seen the snake slithering, fishes swimming, isn't it? The frog jumping, birds flying, horse running and even the humans move isn't it with their limbs now the movement of animals that is the animals move from one place to another hmm? they have special organs for this okay now the fishes have their fins to swim isn't it and they use their tail to swim. The birds have wings to swim. I mean wings to fly. You see the movement of the animals here. The butterflies are flying. The tiger is running. The kangaroo is jumping. The tortoise is hiding inside his shell. When it sees a predator. Isn't it? So, these movements are the characteristics of the animals. Why do they move? They move to hunt, to migrate, to socialize, to protect their young one, to find food, etc. Okay. Now, let us look at the plants. They do not have organs for movement as in animals. Because the soil holds the roots of the plants and they cannot move from one place to another. Observe the picture. The roots are tightly held in the soil. Therefore, the plants cannot move. Does that mean, mean that they cannot move from one place to another? Yes, they cannot move from one place to another. But there are movements in plants. You have seen the plant growth, isn't it? From small to big, when they grow, you can see small, small leaves growing. They get a lot of branches, isn't it? This is the movement. The root growing towards the water in the soil. When the plant is very small, the roots are very small. But as they grow, you can see that the roots have also spread under the soil. Now, you have observed that the sunflower plant turning towards the sun. Isn't it? When the, when the sunlight comes, the flower blooms. And when the sun goes down, when the sun is set, the flower closes. So, this is kind of a movement in plants. This also indicates that, that it is a living being. Okay. Now, let us look at the next point. So, now let us look at the sixth point. That is living beings excrete. Okay. Now, animals in the body of organisms, many activities takes place. As a result, the things which are unwanted for the body also are generated. Therefore, these waste have, be, have to be thrown out of the body. Animals throw out unwanted things of the body in the form of carbon dioxide, sweat, feces, and urine. 
they have special organs for this purpose now in this picture you see the feces of the cow cow dung the dog is passing urine the human is having the sweat glands and they are sweating when they work out isn't it so these are the forms of excretion every organisms breathe they respire isn't it when they give out the air or the carbon dioxide it is also a form of excretion okay now let us look at the plants features plants also give out carbon dioxide during respiration and at the same time they shed off dry leaves the uh, dry stems rotting parts separate from the plants okay so you can see in this picture that the plants give out oxygen during daytime and the human is giving out carbon dioxide which is taken by the plant in the night the trees also give out carbon dioxide okay now here in this picture you can see the dry leaves the leaves are shed off okay this is also a feature of the excretion so therefore what is excretion means children excretion is the elimination of toxic and waste products from the body okay so the animals have special organs for this purpose but uh, plants lack such kind of organs in them for this purpose so they produce two gas waste namely the oxygen during the photosynthesis and the carbon dioxide during respiration other than gaseous waste metabolism in plants also generate organic by products these wastes are stored in form of in the different parts of the plants like the gum oil latex resins are some of the waste products stored in plant parts like uh, barks stems leaves etc eventually plants shed off these parts understood let us look at the seventh point now what is the seventh point living beings reproduce the process of an organism giving birth to young ones is called reproduction some animals reproduce by laying eggs and some directly give birth to their young ones so what is reproduction children reproduction is the process of giving birth to the young ones which resemble it is called reproduction understood now the organisms that is the living beings continue their generation by reproduction due to reproduction the uh, other organism in the environment gets food how like the mosquito is eaten by the lizard isn't it and the snake eats the frog likewise the eagle catches the snake for food isn't it that is the that is the life cycle this we will learn in the next uh, point before that um now tell me the animals which lays eggs name some yeah some are uh, which directly gives eggs is birds i mean are birds reptiles insects and amphibians what is amphibians which can live both in land and water like a frog and all okay now um you know that mammals what are mammals which give direct birth to their young ones and uh, uh, grow them by giving milk to their babies okay those are called mammals now mammals give direct birth to, to, to their young ones like uh, humans uh, the four legged animals like uh, elephant cow etc okay 
Now tell me how do the plants reproduce through? The plants reproduce through their seeds and stems. Okay. Let us look at the life cycle of the plants. Seeds develop from seeds and some plants produce plants through stem buds. Look at this picture. You see seeds here and from the seed the plant is growing. Roots you can see. Okay, now the leaf is growing. The bud they are showing, the flower. Now the flower is having again seeds. It falls on the ground and again the life cycle continues. Did you see that? The same way in animals you can see when the, when the young one grows into a fully grown organism, it again gives birth to their young one. So this is called a life cycle. Okay. Okay. Now next. Huh? Next is the eighth point of characteristics is living beings respond to stimulus. Living beings respond to surrounding stimulus. Usually they respond to touch, heat, cold, sound and smell. They have special organs for this. Now look at our hand. When we touch a hot object, we immediately respond by throwing it away or running away from the heat. Isn't it? Because we feel the heat, cold and all. Isn't it? Likewise, look at the uh, response of the dog here. When it sees its food, it uh, drools. Isn't it? The saliva comes drooling from its mouth. This is a kind of response. Now, when you get angry, your face scrums. Isn't it? When you feel sad, you feel crying. The tears run down through your eyes. This is a kind of stimulus. What is stimulus? Stimulus is a response. Response in a uh, physical way. Okay. Now, in plants, you see, uh, how does the plant stim stimulate, uh, show its stimulus? Like, uh, this is an example of a touch-me-not plant. You have, uh, you must have tried this. Isn't it? In your garden, when you see a touch-me-not plant, when you touch that, it closes its leaves. This is the example of stimulus in plants.